Okay, what up, Roosters, and welcome to the Chicken Coop. I'm your host, Bucker J. Joining me, as always, is Hen Dog Larone, Mitch and Noodle Soup, Broiler Pan Dan, and Julian, if he shows up. So! What, what was that? <laughs> what was that? What? Excuse me? <laughs> okay, come again. <laughs> Wait, what just happened? <laughs> I, did you come up with that on the fly? <laughs> so, Broiler Pan, uh, I think... You were Hello, the one who everyone, did. And welcome to the chat today. <laughs> welcome to best of six. Thank you very much. Yes, welcome, welcome to, best... to best of the chat. Welcome to best of six, where every show we botch our intro. Dick S does something crazy, and we all just sit there in amazement. Like, why? Why did we let him start this? I like my favorite was when you were Mitch the bitch. I liked Mitch and Noodle Soup. It fit the theme well. Anyway, I am confused. Uh, like, I said, know. welcome to the chicken. Okay, so I liked it when like we had people agree to do topics ahead of time, and you know we had structure and planning. Listen, I don't know what you're talking about. This is our most structured and planned episode ever. Yes, this is our most requested episode by far. Go and come back, please. It is. Uh, we're going to be talking about later in the show. How we got into Super Smash Brothers. Um, I'm sure all of you guys are dying to know that, and it's, it's been, as, like I said, it's our most requested show by far. Who requested it? What's so, it? Discord is Carlos. offering developers a 90 10 revenue split and following up on the Epic Warfare Games. Yeah, so after Epic Games said that they were doing a 88 12, Discord said, we'll do better. 90 10. Uh, as a reminder to everyone, Steam's is 70-30. Uh, and again, Steam, you know, changes that per developer. So AAAs don't actually pay that price. Right. <laughs> they probably also don't get as good as 90-10, though. They, I really don't see that happening either. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, play, like, makers like Epic and stuff wouldn't have... It wouldn't have... It wouldn't have been economical for them to make literally their own stores... <laughs> for their games outside of steam if uh if the revenue split was that good so yeah not a whole lot to talk about here but it's cool to see that this that competition is starting to ramp up in this space steam's been kind of dominating for a while and as much as we like steam it's stagnated big time in the past I mean, couple of, of years because uh these are free services for us yeah. Like, so it is kind of crazy to see them, like, going, like, you know, guns blazing at each other like this. And that's just, it's going to trickle down to us in some way. Yeah. And free, kind of. I mean, we're paying basically as part of buying each game, right? Because some yeah. of it is going to Valve Wait, or to Discord or to Epic. So yeah, that's not more money on top of what you would normally pay. So, like, you have, you pay that same amount whether they're on Origin or Steam or uh, yes you know, Windows ninety eight or... yes that is that is technically true but competition's good so looking forward to see if this uh, leads to any changes it definitely puts some pressure on Steam so oh yeah that's Steam that's is, really cool needs that quality of life you know and it's kind of funny because like. Steam, like, one of its biggest problems is, like, all of its social stuff, like, sucks. Like, its chats and voice calls and all that stuff is kind of garbage. But, like, Discord, right? They're already good at all of that stuff, and now they're trying to do the store. <laughs> so there could actually be something there. Yeah. I mean, Discord's trying to become, like, the one-stop shop for everything. Like, they already kind of let you, like, launch other games through discord so you never have to leave the program is it finally gonna happen there's gonna be one store that tells me hey you bought this game on a different store so you know you don't have to say we're not interested and ruin your recommend recommended game settings that would be interesting discord like has the data to maybe do that because it like no it like pays attention to what games you launch and stuff that's interesting I noticed you've been playing a lot of Dolphin. Would you like to buy these games? 
<laughs> it does. Whenever I have Dolphin open, it says I'm playing Dolphin. Everyone likes that Echo the Dolphin series. Maybe we'll make another one. Defender of the Futures. Speaking of Dolphin slash Nintendo consoles, the Nintendo Switch surpasses lifetime PlayStation Vita sales within Japan. Ooh. Which, yeah, that's pretty impressive in two years. Less than two years. So, in less than, so in less than two years in Japan, uh, the Switch has now sold about 6.1 million units. Uh, and in the past week alone, they've sold 281,000. Which, that's some crazy volume. I mean, that's kind of like unthinkable volume for moving electronic devices. I mean, not unthinkable. Like, there, there are definitely things that sell more than Switches do. But... Like like the games. <laughs> yeah, like the games. Only they'll, Nintendo can pull that off. They'll also have a, a bit less manufacturing. But, yeah, this is uh, pretty impressive. Uh, the Switch sales have apparently recently surged due to the... F- Recent release of Smash Ultimate and Pokemon Let's Go. Uh, I have a feeling one of those sure. car- is pulling Pokemon a little Pokemon. more weight than the others, but um, <laughs> didn't Ultimate take like five million in its first few days? Sounds about right. right. Three million in eleven days. Jeez. That's pretty good. In eleven days. That's in... that's probably enough to like pay for most of its development, right? If not like all of it. <laughs> Like right off the bat. Yeah, that's in the U.S. I mean, it depends how they uh, how they value Sakurai. <laughs> <laughs> how much is Sakurai getting paid? Not, not enough. Whatever it is, he needs more. Yeah, probably. Or maybe he needs less. We I really don't know. I don't think so. I can't imagine an amount of money that they're paying Sakurai. That isn't making them go bankrupt. That would be fair for the amount of love, effort that he's poured into this game. Okay. Uh, speaking of people pouring their heart and souls into games, Heroes of the Storm, uh, they have decided to uh, discontinue the Heroes Global Championship, aka their competitive basically the entire competitive scene of Heroes yeah. of the Storm. They're Why also not? moving they're also moving members of the development team to other projects. They were, you know, intentionally vague about that, so it's like upcoming game that they're going to come out. Yes. Uh-huh. But you know, yeah, this is just weird. And I mean, okay, Blizzard is this is not a good like this is not a good look. Like basically the the last pro like major pro tournament was uh, at the end of October the end of October, uh, Crucible, uh, which they have one every six months, and then two Wait, months yeah, after Crucible, the sick rhyme for Julian's intro. Uh, I, I said his or name. Did it's, you not do it on command? I said it's Julian. Yeah, it's actually what I wrote down on the on, on the on the, on the piece of paper. I don't believe you have anything written down. <laughs> I do actually have something written down. I don't believe it. So Julian can go back and listen to the intro on the VOD to know what he's missing out on there. Uh, I guess he's just not special. Or don't. He doesn't, just, he doesn't get to be just insulted like the rest of us. Ooh, Dunman. Insulted? What? Come on, come on, Mitch and Noodle. Your broiler pan, Dan. <laughs> All right, anyway, welcome back, Julian. Uh, escape this. So, yeah, basically, uh, two months ago, the Crucible tournament, or the Crucible event happened. Um, and then after that, Blizzard kind of went silent for about roughly two months, uh, just then to come out and say that they are completely discontinuing their professional league <laughs> and will no longer be running any of the events. Uh, a lot of of the teams and coaches and esports and 
uh, like esports organizations and sponsors are very unhappy about this, given that they, you know, had made preparations for the next season slated to start in January. Uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of players who had just got new sponsorships, just got signed on to teams, esports organizations making new teams for the game and just to be told it's gone and they had got a whole month's notice yeah no that that's the it, the issue here isn't that they're withdrawing support like it makes sense that they want to work on other projects um and they want to utilize they they can utilize their dev team resources however they want to and if they want to say you know moba isn't the prime financial driver we want to be able to release this new product soon. Yeah. That's an okay decision to make. Though, so, I mean, the they, they issues, did two things here, not just... The issues with the timing. Yeah, the timing is bad, but it's also weird. Like, they, they could have scaled back the development team and continued the pro circuit. Like, those, those two things are separate from one another. Because, like, okay, the develop they want to... Like, are they, what are they focusing the teams who did the pro circuit to? Like that, those aren't developers. Those are like the people who like ran the tournaments and organizers and stuff. What, what are they going to? <laughs> and like the other weird thing about this is apparently this year was the biggest year ever for HGC. Like they had like tons of momentum, like more sponsors and teams than ever before. Like like, more viewership than ever before. Apparently, it was, like, one of the most momentous years of HCC's history. It seems like such a crazy weird time to cut it. Yeah, they just don't have the funding. Yeah, maybe that's it. They overestimated the budget, maybe? Uh, there's some theory that has something to do with Blizzard's new CEO. Uh, as they do have a new CEO, and the company has been doing a little bit of reorganizing lately. Um, you know, like killing Diablo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This this is just weird and kind of a dick move, esports move by, uh, by Blizzard to just cut it the last possible second. Um... And, like, doing a radio silence ahead of that. Like, they, they just kept everyone in the dark and then cut everything a month before it was supposed to start. Wait, are we six? We're six. We're What's six up, esportsers? Oh. oh. Hello, friend. Are we uh, live? Yeah. Season. We are you're gonna, live. You're going you're gonna to love our topic. <laughs> you're going to love the mix. It's a good thing I said esportsers. Why? What's our topic? What is our topic? <laughs> it's your favorite game in the world. <laughs> Shenmue? Shenmue? Almost. Starts with an S. <laughs> As the... Is it a yes, David Shenmue. Cage game? <laughs> so the this week's topic is how did you get into Super Smash Brothers? Which we chose the topic said you wouldn't be here. And I and I was even joking. I said if we did it any well, other I'm week. Not, I'm going, yeah, that's why I was gonna say that's why I came in here to say what's up esportsers, because if I said the actual word, then Mitch would have gotten upset. Well there we go. So oh, okay. I'm heading out. I just wanted to say hi. All right. But we're live, so I guess I ruined the the rhythm of the show. Nah, it's okay. We're talking about why Blizzard sucks now. See you later, Pheasant Man Marco. Also, also, uh, I guess the NES and Super NES Classics aren't going to be around after this holiday season. So if you yep. still don't have one, you should pick one up. Or hope and pray that they put Super Nintendo games on the Switch. Yeah. Child Maybe. store sponsored Nintendo. Shout out. Shout out to my shout out to Jack Daniels, because I was there for work today. Again. Nice. Alright, I'm gone. Bye. <laughs> Peace. So uh why don't you guys go out and buy yourselves like go scalp like five or six SNES classics next time or you're so at the store. <laughs> No, do not buy Soldier Boys. They fact, are they're gonna be worthwhile. We'll get to that. We'll get to that when we get to our the new segment. Item. Uh for now we're going to go into our first special segment, Shenmue Watch. Ooh, we're 
we're doing Shenmue Watch now. We're doing Shenmue Watch now. This is uh, this is not. Because I, I wanted to split up our uh, our two segments, but I figured I'd save the new special segment for uh for the end. Yeah. So we're gonna do Shenmue Watch now. Sony accidentally disclosed the number of players for possibly every PS4 game, which this is also both a news topic and Shenmue Watch all in one. So it seemed even more appropriate to do it this way. Uh, yeah, Sony just messed up, and they accidentally, uh... Yeah, ba- basically, they added this My PS4 Life thing, allowing players to share their gaming experience. But in every video, they disclosed the exact number of players who received some trophy, per- and the percentage of people who obtained the trophy. Therefore, oh, you can yeah. figure out exactly how many players played every single game. <laughs> including Shenmue. Since Shenmue is available, 1 and 2 are both available on the PlayStation 4, we can finally get numbers on them. Shenmue has been played by 106,000 people on the PlayStation 4, and Shenmue 2 has been played by 42,800 people. Look at that turnaround. (laughs) (laughs) So if we extrapolate, and I believe this to be very accurate way of figuring out how many people will play Shenmue 3 on the PlayStation 4. Uh, the number of people who will play Shenmue 3 on the PlayStation 4, you heard it here first, is 24,000. So... Something like six. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I got that backwards. 18,000. So 18,000 people will play Shenmue 2, which, by the way, is l- less than the number of people who supported the Kickstarter. So... By that, we can found that most of the people who funded the Kickstarter were fake Russian bots and that uh, Shenmue 3 is a money laundering scheme. That is what we can extrapolate from that information, and that is it for this <laughs> week's Shenmue Watch. You know, now that you put it that way, Kickstarter makes a whole lot more sense. <laughs> Doesn't it? All right, going into our main topic of the week, how did you get into Super Smash Brothers? Uh, I feel like we all have our own little story here, and as I alluded to in the beginning, this is by far our most requested episode. Uh, sort of, uh, Ooh. how did they get Questions. here? Sort of topic where we discuss our origin stories. We're Smash Brothers. We don't have a main topic. Oh, I don't. What? The- oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! This was you meticulously don't, you don't planned. Just like, you don't just spell it out like that. We, this was planned. We, we all have we all have a small book written, and we're just giving cliff notes. Okay, uh, and you can buy the book yes. on Amazon.com/slash Best of Six. That doesn't exist. It absolutely exists. Uh, click our affiliate link in the s- sub box. So, who would like to start? I say that we go in alphabetical order by our intro names. Excuse me? (laughs) (laughs) I said we start with Mauricio. It's it's Discord order. Hey, I'll tell Mauricio's for us all. No. Play the game. No, Discord. No, 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 no. In order by our intro. Alphabetical order by our intro names. What were our intro names? Damn it, I asked. The intro names were <laughs> for Bu- Bucker J, Hen Dog, Larone, Mitch and Noodle Soup, Broiler Pan, Dan, and Julian. So, so what? So Dan. I heard two Bs. I Broiler Pan, Dan, and who? Broiler Pan, Dan, and Bucker J. So uh, Dan's that's first. Dan's first. What are these names? No, I, we don't know. Just yeah, don't. no, I, I don't get it. I don't like it. <laughs> It's um, it's weird and different and not cis white male. It I, I don't know. It's not okay. Not okay. Not okay. Um, so, do you want do you want the long story or the short story? Because I can honestly go on off on this topic for a really long time. Um, Probably the I, short story. My origins aren't necessarily unique. Um, my neighbor's cousin would bring his N64 over my neighbor's house. Oh, you're starting really early, alright. We would play 64. I thought we were doing. 
Um, and I would pick Donkey Kong, and I would forward throw and then run off the stage. And <laughs> that worked pretty well for me for a while. Um, then I got a GameCube. I don't remember when I got a GameCube, but um, I got a GameCube for Christmas. And a couple months after I got a GameCube, I got Melee. And then me and my friends would play Melee at my house every day after school from, like, 3 p.m. until, like, dinner time. Um, we would play. This was the exclusive rule set. The stage was either Big Blue or Hyrule Temple. Had to go. <laughs> 20 stocks. <laughs> um, <laughs> all items on. And that was just it. I mained Roy, and I would stand and charge neutral B and hope people ran into me. They didn't. My friend played... my. One of my friends played Falco. I don't remember what my third... Oh, my third friend played Kirby. So it was me playing Roy, my friend playing Falco, and my other friend playing Kirby. You guys really have the whole, the whole spectrum there of uh, the tier list. Yeah. A <laughs> little bit of everything. Uh, let's see. Brawl came out. I didn't get Brawl for... I didn't get Brawl until I started playing competitively, actually. I just played it at friends' houses. Um, wise choice, wise choice. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I didn't get a copy of Brawl until, like, 2013 or 2014. Um, Jeez. And I had already been playing competitively for, like, a couple of months when I got a copy. Um, but, yeah, I would just play. I started off with Samus, and then there was a point in time where, like, I would go home to, um, where I didn't have Brawl, right? I, but I did have uh, my copy of Melee. So, like, I would go hang out with my friend Mike, we would play Brawl for hours, and then I would come home and I'd be like, I still want to play more Smash. So then I would load up Melee, and I was playing through the single-player event mode, and it was this one night, I got stuck on an event. Um, and the event, what was it called? Hold on. Mode Melee. I think it was called, like, Space Invaders or something. Uh... Oh, this sucks. It doesn't have the name. Anyway, it was the one where you have to beat up a bunch of aliens as mech. Like, all the characters that were from a different planet, you needed to fight one after another at, while playing as mechs. Um, and it was really, really hard, and it took me a really long time to beat. And then, after that, I went to Mike's house the next day, and I was like, hey, I was playing Melee. I got a new character now. And... That was it. I was a Ness main from then until depends on who you ask. Like, and you're still a Ness main. Until Bayonetta? <laughs> yeah, until Bayonetta. <laughs> well, I actually quit Ness in like 2014 for yeah. Zero Suit and Brawl. Yeah, you did. I've had, I've, but I've like played Ness in some capacity since that day, since that night where I got stuck on that event match. That event match is really, literally, just like what made me a nut main. Um, brawl came out. I'm not going to talk too much about getting into the competitive brawl because it's just going to overlap with Jake's story, and I've already rambled on for too long. Um, Smash Four came out. I didn't like Ness at first, and then I saw Nakat play Ness, like just like a match against Nairo, and I was like, oh. Ness can do stuff in this game. And then I was a Ness main until Bayonetta came out. And then I was a Bayonetta main until everyone decided to hate Bayonetta main. And then I was a So, like, player. three seconds? <laughs> I mean, Bayonetta for a good year or so. And then yeah, and it made you, and it made you quit awful. the game. Yeah, it did a little bit. <laughs> it made me fall out of love with the game for sure. And then uh, I mean Jigglypuff for, like, the last year or so of, of Smash 4's life. And Quite possibly one of the worst game. characters in the game. Depending on who you are. There's, there's a lot of people who say she is the single worst character in the game. I think I'm one of those. No, I think Ganon's worse than Jigglypuff. I, I say she's Ganon second worse. worse than yeah. Than Jigglypuff. Se she's second worse. I, 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 um, I just don't think Jigglypuff's that bad, but I don't know. I didn't play enough of that game to have a, a meaningful opinion. Yeah. Jigglypuff no. is the best Scrub Slayer. Smash Ultimate's out. I've been rocking the Zelda. I've been rocking the uh, 
I think I'm gonna end up maining Puff because Puff's like super buffed from Smash Four. Buff the Puff. Buff, buff the, the puff. puff. Like she has really cool ground combos and like the dash mechanics. I think are really good for baiting people into doing dumb stuff. Like I look forward to dash dance into like dash dance to beta roll in into Rasp. That's that's gonna be my thing. I'm gonna call that the Psy guy. Yeah. Yep. Get the maid. And everyone's gonna say, "Oh, that dash dance to beta roll in." That's the Psy guy. That's definitely the mango. <laughs> he did I'm it. Call it the Psy guy from now on. <laughs> he did it in like 2006. <laughs> hey, this game didn't exist in 2006. It's a whole new world. <laughs> yeah, no, it's gonna be the Psy guy. Just you wait and see. Anyway, that's the. Uh, Let me know when you're streaming. That's the short and dirty version of my history of Smash. With like very very little competitive. That was more like the, the history of my casual Smash career than it was my competitive Smash. Well, we all know when your competitive career ended. That was when I beat you at Jake's New Year's party. That's all right. <laughs> True. Uh, okay. I guess I'll go then. I'm next in the alphabetical list. Um, in both. Is that even true? I am. Were you also B? Yeah, I'm Bucker J. Okay. So, he just did it. He just did it. He just did it. Okay. Uh, okay. We want an explanation as much as you do. We It just doesn't exist. Anyway, if you guys would quit rudely interrupting me. Um, Space Travelers oh. is the name of the event match that turned me into an S-Main. Space Travelers, level 36. Nice. Oh, when they put when they start putting that on like uh, melee trivia quizzes, I'll know it. Yeah. So I'm gonna take a slightly different approach than Dan here, and I am gonna like basically ignore my casual Smash career, and especially since I don't even like remember anything meaningful about it anyway. I have no. I I I I'm pretty sure I just played Pikachu and downbeat a lot. So. Uh, and th that's how I was for a long time. Uh, everything began to change. New Year's, my senior year of high school. Fire Nation attack. So, until then, I was a dirty casual in Brawl. 100%. We, our favorite kind of map was a box map with one little hole on the top where you survive to like 900% and you gotta miss 10 techs to die. That was, that was how we played <laughs> Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> um... That sounds amazing. I'm mad I never did that. Still, still <laughs> played, still played a lot of Pikachu. Uh, we had like Final Smash and Smart Bombs. That was the game. Uh, it was at New Year's where I started uh, playing with Dan and Mike. Uh, one of which is a member of this very podcast. Yeah. Uh, they I'm were. In my story. It, this wasn't really in Dan's story too much, but. Him and Mike were, like, casuals who were, like, kind of decent because they just played a lot of one-on-ones against one another. And so they, they like, kind of... They knew some stuff. Um, they weren't very good, but they were way better than the rest of us because we were just filthy casuals. So, like, that, like we, we did, like, a tournament thing. It was a blast. It was a lot of fun. Learned a lot about the game and playing one-on-ones and doing stuff, and it was also on that day where I discovered that I liked a character that wasn't Pikachu, and that character was Pit, which I think is one of the main reasons why I got into competitive Smash to begin with, because Pit and Brawl, uh, once I started looking into the character, I saw that all the crazy stuff this character could do, and if you haven't seen anything about Brawl Pit, you should look up uh, Sive, C-Y-V-E, Look up, uh, look up, Sive Pit Brawl on YouTube, and you'll probably find like his combo videos will come up, and they're amazing. And it was basically that, and in combination with uh, our friend John, who started learning tech like dacusing and uh, glide tossing, that started getting us really interested in the, like the, you know, the different deeper mechanics of the game and glitches, which. Glitches mechanics are synonymous in Brawl. <laughs> More or less. 
Yes, and teching. And also, it's it's also worth noting that uh, when I played casually, um, with I used a Wii Chuck, and I did not have a shield button. I didn't <laughs> think that a shield button was important. <laughs> is, that where, is that where Aaron gets that from? Was, oh. So, I didn't have it for the longest time. So, I didn't, I didn't tech. I didn't... <laughs> I didn't know it was possible. I think it might be like worth noting here that Mike, me, and Jake all use Wii Remote and Nunchuck. In yes, in Brawl. And, and still do, and to this I day, use Wii, Mo- Wii Remote and Nunchuck in Brawl. So, you what this kind of... Smash 4, didn't you? Yes, I also used it in Smash 4. I, uh... Which I, I've since switched, but... I mean, you can't use it in Ultimate. No. And that's why I switched in Smash 4, because I knew I was going to be able to use it in Ultimate. So, my last, like, month with Smash 4, I played with, uh... With GameCube controller. Which, I still think Wiimote Nunchuck is a great controller for Smash. But, anyway, moving on from that... the, uh, the After that, like, I started hosting tournaments... Every week in my basement, you know, kind of, we play we played matches against each other. I had tournaments all for glory, and um, it kind of made us all grow into sort of competitive players, competitive mostly against one another. We'd attend tournaments here and there, two outside of us, mostly get bopped, but it didn't well, matter. You guys didn't start going to tournaments until after I went to... To school, so it didn't start until like August 2013. That's true. So there was like eight months where it was just us playing each other. Yeah, it was. And uh, like, like, it, and I like attribute Smash to like a lot of the friends that I've like made over the years. Like, like honestly, like a lot of those people who are kind of, who are at that New Year's party, like I was, like, sort of starting to become friends with, but once we started playing Smash, it was kind of cemented, and I've met a lot of other people through the game, like, both through high school and then going into college, basically more or less became better friends with, you know, like, Julian here, Lerone, partially because of Smash Brothers. So, and, like, part of that is just, like, you know, hosting events, you know, once... Once we went to school, like, me, Julian, and some others started a Smash Bros. club because they didn't have one well, at the university. They, there was no video game club. Yeah, there was no video game club of any type. But we just made Smash Bros. club because that was the game that we yeah. we cared about. And it's easier to have a video gaming club that has a focus. You know? Yeah. Like, what's the, what's the point of, like, oh, we're it's a video game club. We're going to play video games this, this week, guys. Uh, you mean that one club where they just sat around and watched that one guy play Banjo Kazooie? <laughs> <laughs> that is a real thing that happened. Yeah, I kind of so forgot that somebody to... did just try to start a video game club because they didn't like that Smash Club wasn't inclusive of other games. Yeah, not it's that Smash we, club. not that we explicitly banned other games. We just we focused on Smash because you know one, it was Smash Club. Yeah, I remember one meeting where we, we had Kirby had Pokemon. Right? Yeah, we Kirby Air Ride. Yeah, Kirby Air Ride, Someone Pokemon. Someone brought Injustice. Uh, I think that was key. I could be completely wrong. That was Iun, so Street yeah. Fighter. I own that was it. Yeah, and, and we also... Yeah. Probably should have been like a fighting game club or something. Yeah. But should we have? Yeah. Like, we all... Yeah. Like, like part of it was like, we supplied our own equipment. Which, yeah. we didn't have other fighting. We didn't have fight sticks. We didn't have other fighting games. We had Smash Bros. I feel like if we partnered with Key or something, we might have been able to bring us back. Eh. Point is, it was more like two clubs put together. No. Point is, that's not where the heart was. We liked Smash Bros. We made Smash Club, and it actually worked out really well. We were able to host tournaments. The school f- ended up funding us, giving us money. That took a long time, but it happened. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I d- did meet uh, a lot of people through Smash Club, including my current girlfriend. Uh, shout outs. To- to her. To our one viewer. To our one viewer, Rico. <laughs> if you're out there. I don't even have the stream open. Oops. Oh, and apparently she just... She, I did call you. I did say I met you in Smash Club. You probably didn't get to that part yet. Yeah, probably. She probably sent that, like, right before right I before said it. Um. Yeah, so... 
like Smash Club was like a big part of my college years and just playing Smash Bros and meeting people, running tournaments. You know, we did all sorts of stuff. Traveled to other schools to compete in <laughs> melee. And didn't get invited back. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So I, I mean I would say a lot of a lot of like some of like the best times of like a lot of like the best things I've done or some of the things I'm most proud of are all, you know, have to do with Smash Bros and Smash Club and people I've met through it. So Yeah, that's that's really all I gotta say about that. Which isn't really much of an origin story other than the brawl thing. But yeah, I left out a lot of details that I was hoping you would fill in, and you didn't. I I, I wanted the mine to be a little more focused. Mine was unfocused. Speaking of focus, who's next? <laughs> uh, if we're going by alphabetical order, next on the list is Play it for me. Yeah. It is Hen Dog Larone. Well, Hen Dog. God, what is this? I don't. I don't know. You pretty much covered everything post college, college and up. So, okay. I don't think I ever played sixty four until I was at IIT. So I started with Melee, and I didn't have a GameCube till I was like nine or ten. So I would go to other people's houses. Play a lot of melee with item items on high, and I would run around and get all the items. And my boy was youngling, because you could throw a bunch of stuff. <laughs> and then I eventually got a GameCube. Me and my brother pulled our money together, and I switched to Falco because I discovered the C stick, and I would just F smash across the stage. <laughs> the windshield wiper. So I was I feel like uh, the best C sticker has got to be uh, Mar. Well, yeah, Peach with uh, her down smash. Oh, Peach is the True. best C sticker. I'm wrong. That's, yeah. that's, the, that's the next level. I didn't get there until I was like 18. But <laughs> I was yeah, like, roll yeah, down I was smash. like 10 years old, <laughs> flicking my C stick around, and I would play that game for a few years. And then Brawl came out. I, n I never had a Wii for a while, so I'd just go to other people's houses again, and I'd play Brawl. And I think I like playing Luigi, because that was, that was when I was in the Luigi. And eSports, the haters, <laughs> Luigi's Final Smash is good. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, uh, quality final smash. Okay. Hate it? It's, it's, it's not trash. It's trash. Why trash? <clears throat> it's not. Trash final smash. But anyway. Interesting smash. Trash? It's not trash. <laughs> Doesn't it just like reverse controls or something? It does like it does a bunch continuous of continuous damage. Yeah. yeah. That sounds and you just run up and hit awful. people. Like, like I do not want to go up against that. It's <laughs> so, broken. Clearly well, not trash. Yeah. Carry, anyway. carry on. But anyway, after a while, interest in Smash kind of fell off. Until like early 2013, I was watching Trihex's stream, and he was talking about was it the ninth game in Evo that they were fighting for? The ninth game. Ninth. The ninth. The number nine. Oh, I definitely heard knife. I was very confused. I, heard knife. I think it was the. I think they were fighting to be the ninth game in Evo, eighth or ninth. I don't remember. But anyway, he was talking about that, and like Mewtwo King and all these other players were following his stream and promoting it because he was trying to get people to donate for Melee to be in Evo. And I was like, I used to play Melee. I'll watch this tournament if it makes it in. And what do you know? Melee won, and they were in Evo. And I was actually on. A, I was at ESI. It was a summer program for the college. So I had to pull out my phone sometimes to literally watch Evo, but I was watching, and it was pretty interesting. And that got that actually sort of got I mean the competitive melee. And then I think one weekend I think Julian brought melee. Yeah. And that was when I that was the first time I tried to do like wave dashing and stuff. And then fast forward a few months later to He's going to college. Bodying us all. And I was playing Julian. I think he was trying to play Falcon at the time. And I was trying. I tried <laughs> playing Peach, and I flicked the C stick down, <laughs> and nothing was the same after that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I eventually realized there was all these other people playing Smash on the on the same floor. Yeah, is that true? Yeah. 
And I met Jake, and then Jake pretty much told the rest after that, so. Sounds about right. Yeah, I, like, I like don't actually remember, like, when we first started playing all together, what our skill levels were like at all. Especially Larone's. Like, I just have this memory of Larone always being better than me, but I don't know if that's actually no. true. I was terrible at tech until one... I think it was summer break. I started playing PM and I actually started practicing my tech. I mean, you you won like every tournament in Smash Four. You didn't even own the game. I I, I think you're just good at these fights. I only I was only at two of them and I took I beat the one the first one and choked the second. Yeah, that was all of them at that time. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, there was the launch one, but oh yeah, and the launch one. Literally won the Who day did you one. Play at launch. Rosalina. I even had a tournament. Oh yes. Yeah. I, I call Rosalina when the trailer happens. <laughs> she was that too. But I oh, I tried to make that work and it didn't work. Lucina was not winning. Yeah. Like, the only thing I, re I really remember with... I, I feel like I would, like, always lost you in Melee. Maybe, maybe I didn't. I definitely never lost you in Brawl. Of course. But. The melee. I, I don't really have much competitive career. I didn't go that. Most of the tournaments I went to were for the collegiate thing. Yeah. And I mean, you I also did uh, really well in that amateur bracket that one time. at um... Yeah, that, that's my career highlight. I got top eight at Rubicon 3 amateur break. <laughs> <laughs> there, were, there were like 60 people in that bracket. Yeah. That was, that was actually pretty and, good. Uh, I secretly went to a top cut once and I got body. There was also in uh, that collegiate crew battle where you went up against Sam, uh, who is a pretty decent Marth. That main. was all coaching. That was all. Who is a pretty just... decent Marth main in Chicago? Who, easily better than all of us. Yes. Except that, that he had a major peach weakness. Yeah. <laughs> which uh, our coach told Larone how to take advantage of and <laughs> what do you know <laughs> I still I still don't believe that that worked <laughs> the coaching by the way was and I quote roll down smash <laughs> roll into him and down smash mind you this man plays Marth I shouldn't have to tell you why roll down smash should suck against Marth <laughs> Roll down, okay. roll down smash might be the worst strategy possible against Marth <laughs> as Peach. However, I traded three stocks, so it's all good. <laughs> and then my last stock, I was doing so well, and then I, I, I guess I held D-pad or something. We were playing on twenty XX, and I, that made me auto shield. So we had to reset, and then I got body, and I was sad. Rip, man. And that was that was a legendary crew battle. Dog plus shout outs to Dog Plus. Shout outs to Way Dog. better than us at Smash Four. <laughs> Dog, plus. Dog Plus, who we who we thought uh -huh. was like a casual off the street the first time we played against him in <laughs> melee and a crew battle, and then he played him in Smash Four and he destroyed and he, yeah. every single one of us. <laughs> yep, he he put us all into a body bag, zipped us up, <laughs> destroyed us in was, Smash was he Four. The one who was dressed as Luigi. <laughs> No, 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 oh, no, 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 Around all of you, I'll, I'll sell tell it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You basically the the spoiler is that Mitch came in basically after all of our stories have ended so far, just about. So that's, <laughs> the spoiler is it's it's some I, new I, content. I, <laughs> um, all right, and next up is and with the special nickname, Julian. Okay, um, so. I guess I can just start from the beginning. I I got my N64 when I was like four. <laughs> uh, going all the way back. Well, I, the N64 was the first home video game console that I, I ever owned. The first game I got for that was Mario Kart 64. I got it from my grandma. 
and I don't remember when I bought Smash. I got it eventually, and when I bought it, I played that game like nonstop. I didn't have not well. I had like friends growing up, but not that many people went over my house. So I used to like just play with comms, and you know, I was a casual play with items and stuff. Uh, I remember vividly when um, I played like a 99 stock match with CPUs Why? on Mushroom Kingdom. And I would just do that. I would just play Smash because I love the game that much. Uh, from there, I got a GameCube at, at Christmas, similar to Dan. I don't remember when I got Melee either, but I did get Melee. Played that game to death. Did all the event matches and stuff. Uh, adventure mode. Honestly, the and then from there, I think the Smash game I played the most was Brawl. Hey. Kind of ironically, because Brawl's like my least favorite Smash game. Makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, Brawl's the best Smash game for those of you who don't know. Yep. Most people would disagree. <laughs> Uh, don't, I actually don't people. know about most people. Yeah, don't don't say that. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> You're including like the masses that don't care about. Okay, C- competitive players. Most competitive okay. players think Smash Four is the worst Smash game. Okay, yeah. fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> um, but yeah, I played Brawl. I guess Brawl was the first time I played in my own head what I thought was competitively. Uh, because I used to I used to play with my friends from like. Grammar school or like uh, eighth grade, Brawl was two thousand eight. Yeah, eighth grade. I used to play like he used to he used to main Marth, and I used, I main Ike and Smash uh, and Brawl. I used to play him. I uh, did subspace. Uh, yeah. Am I the only one who's late to the subspace train? <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't discover subspace until twenty thirteen. I, I didn't the know it was in first, the game. <laughs> what? The first thing I did in Smash was play subspace. I, I literally had no idea what it was. I it, I mean, it it had a weird name, so I thought it was just some demo or something. I may or may not have played on Dolphin, but that's bad. Well, I beat Subspace. I remember getting my ass kicked by Taboo at my grandma's house. <laughs> um. Anyway, a Brawl was that was around the time, and I was playing Brawl competitively. I'm doing air quotes when I went to college, and I met Jake. <laughs> I don't, Jake, I don't even remember this, but that's when I like no, you asked me if I. No, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To, to, to quick fill in, Julian, uh, I like I was talking about Smash, and I'm like, oh, you know, you play. I, I can't remember exactly how we got on the topic of Smash. I think I was talking to, with with Charles because Charles was into Smash. Uh, shout out to Azu. And uh, it was something Julian said something like like oh yeah like oh yeah I play brawl like I consider myself a competitive player. Yep, I, I said those words. <laughs> Jake was like, really? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And then at one point, we, we played 1v1. I got my ass kicked. <laughs> yeah, yeah played, Ike, you know, Ike, Ike uh, against my pit in Meta Knight. It didn't, it's not a good matchup. Is that when you showed me like the jab block stuff with, with, with Ike? Yeah. And Brawl? Okay. Oh, oh yeah, the, yeah, the, the jab cancel. Yeah. Yeah, I taught you a bunch of Ike tech. And I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and, and, and I guess that's when I just that's when I actually discovered competitive Smash. Um, right around the time the end of Brawl's life cycle and when Smash 4 came out. And then from there I just when like we made Smash Club. Um I started playing Melee com- competitively, I guess. That's when I like learned how to wave dash and L cancel and stuff. But I didn't really go that go to that many tournaments. Uh, yeah, and here we are now. I bought Ultimate, and I'm playing it now. True. Uh, TL didn't listen too long. Didn't listen. I've been playing Smash all my life, and I consider myself a semi-competitive player, even though I don't go to any tournament. Play it to the day you die. Yeah. And I think that just leaves us now with Mitchin Noodle Soup. Well, it was the summer of 1986. <laughs> All right, so I had played the games up through Brawl, complete casual, you know, whatever. Had a few party nights with them at friends' houses and never really thought anything of it. And then one day, and mind you, I became friends with Jake through class. Mm-hmm. I, I had nothing to do with Smash with him until way later. 
I, yep. I, I met all these people unrelated to Smash. It, it was just weird. <laughs> yeah, he he, he <laughs> did he, I, he literally didn't go to the Smash Club meetings. Like he had nothing to do with it. <laughs> then one day I'm in. Uh, we have a friend called James, and he brings us into his dorm. And Jake's there, and we're like, oh hey, I know you. And that was the night, the first competitive night of my life, where I beat James in Brawl by doing nothing but flutter kicking and yelling, oh, Mitch just love the flutter kicks. <laughs> oh, God. I, I have witnessed this. He was not fun happy. Fact, fun yeah. fact about James, James brought music to the last stock in a Brawl tournament. In an actual tournament. <laughs> James and his damn Minecraft <laughs> So that happened. Um, then, uh, you know, over the summer, I said, you know, all my friends in this game. So, uh, you know, I worked at this place. It was like a poor man's GameStop. So I could uh, borrow games from there. You know, since we had 200 copies of Brawl, I took one home, put it in my Wii U, which I had just bought recently. And uh, I turned on Brawl and I was like, wow, this game's terrible. And I never played it again. <laughs> <laughs> I remember thinking that because I picked up Yoshi, and as you know, in Brawl, Yoshi's a terrible character. Uh, Yoshi is not that felt good. Just awful. Like moving around the screen wasn't. It's like, ah, uh, you know, a Wii games in a nutshell. Yoshi's solidly yeah. mid tier, low low. Anyway, mid-tier. Then uh, some time comes out, and you know, Smash Four comes out, and as the casual I am, I'm playing it in Jake's dorm, and uh. At this point, he was rooming with the guy I fluttered kicked to death. And, you know, it was big old free for alls with eight people, like, holy crap, having fun, whatnot. You know, still fun, not competitive yet. Then around February comes out, my uh, two other friends from the, my same department, none of the people in this chat or are related to their Smash like <laughs> things are like, hey, let's play Smash. I'm like, okay. So then, like, every day after class for like four or five hours, we just play Smash 4. <laughs> You know, we started with, uh, you know, true casual mode. We had random stages between all of them. It was three-player free-for-all. We had items. And uh, occasionally Jake would show up and be like, hey, you got some Smash in here? <laughs> like, sure. Then <laughs> eventually we decided, you know, it's more fun if we take out the items. It's more fun if we do a rotation, you know, have 1v1. And we're like, oh, it's more fun if we only do FD. And, it's, you know, that's... FD, Fox only know it. We actually thought that was real. Um, <laughs> I mean, and I would like, always get mad at you guys. Like, it's it's not, this is not actually how they do it. <laughs> you eventually sat us straight and we got a real stage list. <laughs> Jake was like, Mitch, you should come to our tournament we're hosting in the bar. And I was like, all right, I'm going to fucking lose though. And uh, so I go there and I thoroughly, this is not even, it wasn't pretty. I thoroughly defeated Jake and Julian. Like it wasn't pretty. Like Julian was so salty. Like he he whispered to himself. He thought I didn't hear it. But Laurent was standing there watching. He just looks around. And like I can't believe he fucking beat my Diddy. It was great. <laughs> I probably had that. And Jake. I think this did have. <laughs> Jake. <laughs> now mind you, Jake is a fucking dumbass. Um, <laughs> he he eats me wow. as DDD and tries to uh, suicide me. DDD. So he does oh, that. He jumps on stage. Yeah. He puts his controller down. And then I mash out and jump back up to the stage, and he dies. I remember so that. Played the garbage character, Ange. Yeah, so 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 I made some mistakes, all right. Because <laughs> like I played Mitch all the time, and I destroyed him all the time. So I'm like, this is gonna be a cakewalk. So I played random and, <laughs> and me the whole time, <laughs> and I lost to it. I was not pleased with myself <laughs> after that. <laughs> oh, okay. So he just knocked you all out of my way. <laughs> yeah, and then you, then Lerone kicked my ass. You know, this, this guy doesn't even own the game. Just over there with Lorzelina, like, okay. Know, I don't know how to play the game. I'm just doing whatever feels right. Yeah, he, he was my roommate, so like, he could, <coughs> he could play the game whenever he wanted. <laughs> yeah, I also want to say I didn't own Brawl for a very long time, and I like to think that there was a period of time when I didn't own Brawl where I was pretty good. Yeah. Anywho, after that, I, you know, uh, played a lot more with the other guys and just Jake, like, competitive. You know, Jake, every anytime we'd play Smash 4, he'd go on behemoth rants about how awful the game is and how everyone should just play Brawl. So I very quickly learned that just saying nonsense about Brawl and how awful it is got under his skin. It was great. 
and thinks, oh, but Brawl is tripping, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then it does. <laughs> then so, uh started going to like more of the school tournaments you know i teamed with jake and we always took second place except that one time we don't like to talk about that time <laughs> or uh i don't want to talk about that now i never did win any of those tournaments but i did take second at the one where everyone was busy with something else except dench <laughs> <laughs> that was that was such an easy bracket uh i did go start going to real tournaments and learning i was actually just awful at the game but <laughs> but <laughs> I beat one real player. I won one real set at a tournament outside, uh, a Chicago tournament outside of uh, uh, the school. It's one kind person. of it's kind of funny because you generally beat me in Smash Four, like in tournament and stuff. But whenever I went to one of those things, I always did better than you, like a hundred percent of the time. <laughs> it was annoying. You just knew me too gosh darn well. <laughs> I mean, I remember you would just like you had this thing where you just walk away from me and forward smash and I'd always fall for it. <laughs> that was the thing I did for a while. I was like, I can't not run into it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I spent some time in Missouri training with people, leveling up, and I came back and was much better than Jake at that point and Charles and everyone else, except for Dench and Anderson. God, and then I, you know, I lost to Dench and a few too many times. And I just stopped playing the game. Yeah, it makes sense. My, my other pals moved on to Melee. I tried to move on with them, but was like, this takes time and effort, unlike Smash 4. <laughs> uh, yeah, see, Melee, yeah. Melee, you never quite uh, quite caught up. Yeah, I do. I, I just remember sitting there getting chain grabbed by your Mark. He's like, I don't want to do this. Well, <laughs> so if you want to play, if you want to play Yoshi, that's like three times the time and effort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, you, so you play Luigi ultimate. Fox trying to figure out a reason not to main Yoshi, but he's better than ever. Uh, yeah, currently looking at Big the Cat, and he's actually terrible, so I probably won't main him. Why do you keep... Oh, Incineroar. Oh, yeah, I yeah, it's a yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Big the Cat, what are you talking about? <laughs> when I first heard I thought you thought were talking about a player... I don't know. It sounds like someone's <laughs> tag, Big the Cat. He looks just like him in the purple skin, at least. Yeah, okay, perfect. I just got that. <laughs> there's, even, there's even a spirit for it. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, and of course, my greatest achievement is uh, I was at one of Jake's parties, and I was playing against Dan in some uh, friendlies. <laughs> he pulls out his bayonetta, and he beats me in a single game. He's like, now I'm going to two-stock you the rest of the night. And then I immediately won a best of five against him. Immediately won a best of five happened. against him, put the controller down and walked away. I was never getting a, a better than that. See, I didn't I didn't witness Dan saying that. However, it is totally 100% in character. So... No. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't that, I think, think that... I... That was definitely the peak of my career. That, I think that is definitely a salty Dan thing yeah, to say. I've thoroughly sure. trounced everyone here except Lorraine. I'm pretty sure Lorraine still has me beat. Oh. So I, 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 I beat Lorraine in doubles all the time, but that doesn't really count. Well, you, missed missed a couple, you missed a yeah. couple of important plot points when you were retelling our story. Hold on, hold on. I was telling what? my story <laughs> the way I wanted it told, all right? It's your fault you left out the good stuff in your story. Well, why? So you left out Tech Thirteen, which was amazing. Um, yeah, I figured that wasn't important. The only reason I didn't want to mention Tech, the the reason I focused more on the later stuff is because Tech Thirteen, the only person it involved is you, and like no one else who's part of the podcast. Right, which means I was the only person who would talk about it, and I didn't. So instead, you talked about everything that everyone else wanted to talk or was going to talk about. Yeah, pretty much. Listen, I had the luxury of going second. Do you see the issue that I see here? Nope. So... Okay. Also, you left out the fact that we single-handedly temporarily revived the Chicagoland brawl scene. I actually, yes, I actually did want to mention that, and it slipped my mind. It is kind of important to note that in Cary, Illinois, and, okay, so we, we kind of talked about IIT a little bit, how, like, a bunch of us started, started independently becoming semi-interested in competitive Smash, 
and then kind of happened to become friends, and then that just kind of solidified all of us becoming competitive Smash players. Um, including <laughs> Joe, and including the people that Mitch was talking about, the two classmates from his department, which literally, they literally had nothing to do with Smash Bros. <laughs> and then they became just as into competitive Smash as the rest of us. It's very <laughs> strange how that happens. Like, it, it, it's it's kind of amazing we, to me. We, we, we had half the physics department on Smash Bros. Like, Dench was in it too. Like, we, we yeah, it, it is actually kind of amazing to me how, like, you can trace back like a lot of people getting into competitive smash due to like me, Julian, Dan, and Mike, like those, those four people like single handedly, well, quadro handedly got a lot of people involved in competitive smash. It's kind of funny. Eight hands between them, not four. Yeah. But when you talk about one person, you say single handedly. So I'm going to assume each one of those people is only using one of their hands. Their other hands too busy playing smash bros. And and we got people like retired brawl players out of the woodworks to start going to tournaments. And yeah, so oh, we, we we simultaneously revived and re-killed the <laughs> Chicago <laughs> Land brawl scene. And I can explain what I mean by that real quick because <laughs> I think this is kind of an, an important plot point. Dan, you're right. I regret not talking about this. But so basically. In my basement, my, my parents' basement, I started hosting these weekly brawl tournaments, right? Which grew pretty big. Like, yeah. uh, Tech 13, which is the first, like, big tournament I hosted. Our crew was called Tech, so we called the tournaments Tech. So, Tech 13 um, was a 32-person tournament in my parents' basement, which is a lot. It took place over the course of a couple of days. Uh, we did it over a spring break. Well, no, we didn't. We should have. We didn't. We finished it in spring break. It took us uh, a couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it, yeah, it was technically only a few days of actual gameplay, but with, like, you know, school in between. So. <laughs> um, but because of that, I started, like, getting into hosting occasionally these, like, bigger events where I would, like, invite people outside of our core group. And this started to expand more once we... Uh, started going to tournaments occasionally, which most most of the time, Brawl was sort of a side event tournament at a lot of places. Uh, there, no, no, no. I, there, I mean, there were some... They just didn't run tournaments. Yeah, there were there was not a lot. Like... Uh, or Brawl, there wasn't anything. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot at the time. Um, GHQ was, like, one of the few uh, Brawl tournaments that ran. And... Uh, Basically, we started, you know, getting more people interested in the brawl scene again because all of a sudden we had our group of people, which we would bring a bunch of people to brawl tournaments, right? A bunch of, like, pretty decent people at the game to brawl tournaments. And we even had a friendly rivalry with another crew called the Goon Squad who uh, also started showing up to more tournaments in part because we would show up. We'd be like, hey, we're going to this tournament. Are the Goons going to show up? And then... I'm sure they would have gone anyway, but I like to imagine that we had some influence on that. But like, yeah, I think we definitely did. Yeah, and because brawl tournaments started getting more numbers in the Chicago area, in part because of our group, uh, more people started hosting brawl tournaments. And in fact, uh, one particular venue, um, we EXP? EXP, they they didn't really host any brawl tournaments, but we. <laughs> started like basically begging and pleading and campaigning like bring brawl back to exp well we shouldn't have done this <laughs> so after uh after lots and lots of time trying to get them to run it he finally caves the owner and decides to run a brawl tournament it, like dedicates some like serious time to uh to you know advertising it and putting some work into it well it just so happens that i had scheduled one of my events on the same day <laughs> what? and oh, a lot yeah. of people chose include not only from people from tech but some of those outside people who would go to these other kind of tournaments opted to go to my tournament instead <laughs> because we were gonna be there <laughs> <laughs> 
and this wow and um he found out and showed up in our twitch chat because we streamed these <laughs> and he showed up in our twitch oh, chat <laughs> he was not happy <laughs> That like weren't he was like weren't you the ones who wanted me to run brawl again? <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, he was way less interested in running brawl events again. He ended up running one more later on. Had terrible attendance because most of tech was at school. So, <laughs> and after that, I, I like. I, like, cannot think, other than, like, some E2C side events, I cannot think of any Brawl tournaments we're talking about in the Chicago scene since he, since the EXP Brawl tournaments. Yeah. Like, like we brought... Yeah, we got... Ook got, yeah, got, got a retirement. Uh, DLA started playing more Brawl again. We got some like, Wi-Fi heroes yeah, show up to tournaments. Kane. You remember Kane? Yeah, I remember Kane. <laughs> That was Hoenn. how we met Hoenn, who's Hoenn. a top Chicago Smash 4 and Ultimate player. Yep. Um, the Goon Squad that we mentioned earlier, JJ Rockets. JJ Rockets. Their, their yeah. Leader, who some of you might know from Smash 4. Yeah. Um, from being like hmm. the top five Diddy in Smash 4. Yep. He was, he was, he, yeah, the, basically the leader of the Goon Squad, our, our rival group. <laughs> I wonder if that video of their diss track is still up on YouTube. It probably is. I mean, it's not really a diss track, but it's not a yeah, it's no. not a song. But um, it was yeah we yeah we did have a crew battle by the way against the Goon Squad for those wondering an important piece of history. Tech it's did win. win that crew battle. It was a three oh. game crew battle. It was really unfair. <laughs> yeah, we, the Goon Squad the played show. Brawl. It's very important to note that Goon Squad straight up played Brawl. Uh, and Goon Squad had a total of three real members. <laughs> and so, like, to get a team of five, they had to, like, invite some brothers. <laughs> Sounds like you guys just had it better. We had a much deeper pool of players. and <laughs> Sounds like you're the better squad, then. Well, here's the thing. The three games were Brawl, PM, and Melee. Okay. Thing about... Thing is, they, um... They took us to the cleaners in Brawl. <laughs> they... The, you know, the main game we competed in, they, they absolutely destroyed us. However, Melee and Project M is what we stacked our teams for. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in Project M specifically, we had DLA, who is one of the best PM players in Chicago. One of the best PM players, like, back in PM's heyday. Yeah. Like, was one of, he was just straight up one of the best PM players. He took out four out of five of their team by himself. Um, <laughs> sounds like you had the better team. <laughs> it was the I have a I have a combo video from that crew battle, and it is a DLA combo video, straight up. There's almost nothing from Brawl, and only a little bit of melee. It's almost all his. It's almost all PM, which was, by the way, the shortest of the crew battles. <laughs> You left out you all did. that fun stuff. I did leave out all that fun stuff. I, I didn't want to drone on, but there was some you interest. Did a, uh, a similar thing to Dench. <laughs> you had a three game crew battle in our dorm. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Dench, he, he beat me in Smash he agreed War. To that for some reason. For some odd reason, he agreed to a three game crew battle against me. By my, it was just confident. him versus me, and. Yeah, I, he he told me it's like, oh no, I play a lot of PM, and he clearly had no idea what the hell. <laughs> was. Like, I'm not even convinced he'd heard of it. Before. He did not take a stock off of me in PM or Brawl. <laughs> Who did you play in PM? Uh, and that I played random. <laughs> and Didn't you do this through all five games? I played it's only three. I played. No, it was supposed to be all just... five, but you beat him early. Yeah, I beat him early. <laughs> I really like doing like multi game like one v ones like that because I, most people are not good at the anything outside their chosen game. Mm -hmm. But like I'm actually like decent at melee, decent at sixty four, way, way above average at brawl, like pretty good at Smash Four and pretty good at Ultimate. Yep, same. So I like just and like 
you either run into melee players who can only play melee and like a little bit of 64, or you run into Smash 4 players who can only play Smash 4. And you just destroy them in every other game, and it's it's a good time. Yeah. You... I, I definitely take some pride in playing like the whole series. Yeah. I'm being good at it. Yeah, I take pride. And 64 is probably my weakest game, but like against the average 60 like if if you're just a little bit better than someone in 64 and you know just a little bit have a little bit more yeah, knowledge so. you can really mess people up like don't pick kirby just pick kirby <laughs> which yes i do play kirby in smash 64 that's everyone's main unless they actually play the game or falcon captain falcon if you ask 64 players they say captain falcon's way easier than kirby like even at a low level it's up there yeah. yeah, yeah. Once you yeah, if you mess around with Captain Falcon for like a half hour, you'll probably we'll he'll probably be hour. better than your Kirby. Are you I main I main Nest in sixty four, so you guys can all. I That's don't commitment. Do that. Uh, I'm a Yoshi main. In I don't actually know why. Oh, well, of course. I, that was one tournament where I played Yoshi. Sixty four Yoshi is good. And Charles told me he watched me play, and he was like, "I don't know why you lost that." You just kind of died. <laughs> yeah, that happens. <laughs> yeah, 64's got a bit of a touch of death problem. Uh, it was more like I just, I, I didn't have a jump. Like, I jumped off the stage and no no second jump for whatever reason couldn't get back. <laughs> that happens to me in all the games. It's weird. Double jump canceling is uh is also yeah. a thing in uh, Smash 64, so. Double jump canceling makes playing, like, it took me a long time to play Ness in... PM melee 64 because of double jump canceling. Wait, PM? PM you could like not double jump you, cancel. You need to hold jump while you're doing the attack. So you need to do an extra thing. That's like kind of what I do anyways, like not even intentionally. I just do that a lot. Like if I'm doing full hop, if I'm doing full hops, I'll like hold the jump button for an egregiously long amount of time. <laughs> Especially when I'm playing, like, Ness and Yoshi, which I don't know if that's, like, because of PM. Like, I somehow developed that habit. Did you know the best the best Smash 4 player in Springfield, Illinois, plays Rob? And he is a nightmare. He is absolutely awful to go up against. That's... Oh, Springfield, never mind. I forgot that Springfield and Champagne were different. Yes, they are. Champagne is a lot better at Smash than Springfield. I was going to say, Tyroy, I'm pretty sure, is in Springfield, but he's in Champagne. Who plays Smash in Springfield? Like four people. <laughs> there's a Bayonetta, there's a Cloud, there's a DDD, and there's a Yoshi. Oh, that's me. Mitch and Noodle Soup. <laughs> but any final thoughts on getting into Smash Brothers? I guess I should, um, I should say. Uh... I co-founded that club Jake was talking about with Jake and... I helped them move things, but yeah. I was never actually an official part of the club. <laughs> so like that's why I left out a lot of my college story, because it's basically the yeah. same that Jake said. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe Jake should have covered some of the stuff I didn't instead. But... <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> Listen, recency bias, you know how it is. Um... If I have any closing thoughts about getting into Smash, which I would recommend doing it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I would it, nothing. Yeah, Smash is a real fighting game. Smash has changed my life, for sure. Yeah. I attribute a lot of good things in my life because of Smash. Yeah, it's a great he game. He took the only girl from the club. He somehow pulled it off. <laughs> Even if Batman did it. That is true. I did do that. My uh, she really doesn't play much Smash, but you know, she likes she video. She was there for you. That's not so, even true. She had she literally didn't know my name for the first two months. Yeah. Hmm. I still don't know your name. She just called me "Hey you." <laughs> yeah, she's being coy, for sure. No, she like legit didn't know. <laughs> she actually, remember... she actually definitely one hundred percent did not like me for a while. I oh, remember like when I bit Mitch and beat Mitch in Pokemon, and he got so mad he had to beat me like all night until he felt better. <laughs> that could have been worse. But... Are you, that could have been worse. Are you talking about you? Or... No, no, that's what uh, Rico Snow said in the chat. 
Oh, right, because uh, I came back after summer. She was like, Mitch, play me in Poke, and I was like, okay. And she just like camped me out with Chandelure or something, and hey, and I, was, I lost one game, and I'm just like, all right, fine. <laughs> and I beat her for like three hours straight. You might want to not say uh, in Poke. Oh my straight. god. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyone want to talk about Soldier Boy? Yeah. So we're gonna no. go in. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to be an exec board member. Don't lie. So, uh, we're going to go into a new a temporary segment uh, while this saga goes on. Soldier Watch. 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 <laughs> um, so, this is talking about the Soldier, Soldier Watch and the Soldier Boy player. Not called the Soldier Boy for some reason. Uh, for those who don't know... For those who don't know... Uh, yeah, we definitely did make that joke first. John Tron could go drown in a lake. John Tron stole from us and by extension, Mark Brown. <laughs> um, so, Soldier Boy, for those who don't know, uh, released a, uh, Soldier Boy handheld console. Of course they know. Yeah, just, just, just a quick fill-in. Uh, the which the runs a bunch of ROMs. It, 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 it runs a bunch of pirated ROMs with an emulator on, like, a Raspberry Pi. All right, that's, that's the console. It has Ultimate, it has Smash Bros. It has a real game. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, that was a fake account. account. Yes, yeah, so a joke Twitter account. And follow. <laughs> a joke Twitter account pretending to be Sakurai said that Smash Ultimate is on the Soldier Boy handheld. And Soldier Boy retweeted. <laughs> and follow. <laughs> and follow. <laughs> so so uh the, the the long story short of this hey, is he's uh probably just along for the ride. Soldier Boy! Very well, quite possibly. Um, according to the to the trademark counterfeiting act, could face imprisonment for up to ten years. Okay, is this a legit article or like this article? This article is just kind of saying what is already kind of fact. Like, uh, I mean, like, like, I mean, he's not being charged to our knowledge. Correct. He is not. He is not being, he is not being charged, and there are no th current threats against him that are known publicly. Okay. However, people are pointing out that um, according to the law, if <laughs> Nintendo or any other game company were to file suit against Mr. Boy, he would, <laughs> he could face 10 years in prison for the first offense and up to 20 years for repeat offenses, which by the way, since he has multiple consoles... Some people seem to think that he may be able to get charged multiple times. Um, also, keep in mind that he is reselling a console that's already available on Amazon from China. Um, it's cheaper on Amazon. It is cheaper on Amazon. However, uh, China, you know, it's it's harder to go after people in China selling this kind of stuff. There are no rules. Because they don't have the same copyright laws in China. Or laws. Uh, However, Soldier Boy r taking these Chinese products and reselling them from an American-bound company is not good. <laughs> you can't do that. Um, like, he's doing it right now. Yeah, and not only that, he's also he's also like marketing it. Like he's just lying. Like he's just straight up putting on his Twitter lies about the console to sell it. Like playing Smash Bros. Ultimate, which is, and all, I mean, other stuff like even like just the, just the, the the marketing material on the website is not only inconsistent. So it's it's so inconsistent that some of it has to be wrong. <laughs> like, like he says that it has over eight hundred games. The picture says over three thousand games, and the description says over like twelve hundred games or something. It's 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 a mess. <laughs> and it's over nine thousand. <laughs> the, the the whole thing is a giant joke. But yeah, just a reminder that Soldier Boy could go to jail for this. Uh, this is also a federal crime, by the way. So this is this is a felony charge. I mean, so if you are seventeen to eighteen years old and getting into the esports team or scene, you might not want to join Soldier Boy's team that he's starting up. Yes, nice uh, segue into Soldier Boy is starting an esports team. Uh, a col but according to Soldier Boy. Uh, Ninja has been a mentor of sorts, a mentor of sorts to him as he was getting into gaming. 
And he said, it's going to cost me a lot to hire Ninja to play for me. Well, now that the soldier thing's out, I don't, I don't think that's happening, my guy. <laughs> Console, right? He has to. He probably was just like, "Oh, Soldier Boy wants some advice. I'll talk to him." Okay. But he doesn't want to actually affiliate with this fool. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah, Soldier Boy and Soldier Boy and gaming has had a rocky history. Um, like that, about- like that time he uh made that YouTube video where he was playing Braid and uh. <laughs> That was gold, though. That, that was, was yeah. that was great. Absolutely, that was funny, and nobody's going to jail. <laughs> this is funny, and a lot of people are going to jail. Yep, he's had an up and down history with gaming, for sure. Up and down history. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, he's clearly never taken gaming that seriously. Sure. So this is this seems like an ill-advised venture for him, <laughs> and. Yeah, I don't understand any of it. I don't know why Soldier Boy is doing this. I don't know. He says it's perfectly legal. Yeah, he does. He well, says he, he says this. He's the one doing it. He says maybe he has the best lawyers in the world. And he's discovered the loophole no one else has found. Okay, what lawyers can defend this? Maybe, Apparently. maybe his company is incorporated in China, and he's just like a proxy board member, and he does the branding, and it, it's not that far fetched, I guess. I don't know. It makes no sense. <laughs> but <laughs> honestly, I people are buying the thing just for the meme. So like, it's working, I guess. <laughs> uh, no, it's not worth it. <laughs> I mean, he might go to jail for the rest of yeah. his life. But <laughs> let me tell you about something called asset seizure. <laughs> oh, all those profits he made. Yeah, I hand him over. Yeah. It's, I don't know. Uh, so the last piece of news for the night is, is there another piece of news? the New York Times crossword puzzle forgets that the Wii U existed. You're actually talking about this? <laughs> yeah, this is our funny news topic of the week. So um, basically, it's not a very long story. The New York Times crossword had a, a word that was predecessor of the Nintendo Switch with three letters available. <laughs> I mean, that's technically true. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, yeah, the predecessor to Nintendo Switch was apparently the Wii. It well, was, that, though. Well, why, why not, like, the NES? <laughs> that's... That's more of an ancestor than a predecessor. You'd assume they would mean... Predecessor oh, usually it, it, that carries a connotation. Yeah. And the Wii is just the middle console, so it doesn't even make any sense, even if you like. The Wii U is just an expansion of the Wii. Oh yeah, I forgot about That's that. Part of the issue with the Wii U. Yeah, the Wii was so poorly understood that like the layman literally doesn't know it existed and or doesn't <laughs> like like might not like I've I've met some people who thought Wii U was a game. <laughs> So remember, was like oh like a new Wii Sports. It's called Wii U. I remember having a conversation with someone in high school, like when I told them I had a Wii U, and they're like, "Oh, is that a is that like an extension for the Wii? Like, what is that?" When they unveiled the Wii U at E3, that's literally what I thought it was. That's what I thought it was for actually years. Like, and I, like, I was a competitive brawl player. I didn't even know the Wii U. <laughs> like, it was. Well, I knew it was a. I knew the whole time, because, I don't know, I guess I'm just not retarded, um. <laughs> <laughs> no, go back and watch the E3 and tell me, like, where they make it clear that that's a separate console. Jake, <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna bleep that out? It's oh, too late now. <laughs> yeah, this is a live stream. You, you, yeah. you, guys, you guys told me to stop it with the eSports thing, so I'm stopping. <laughs> <laughs> this Probably. is what you get. This is what your pride is wrought. Be careful what I'll ask, what I ask for. Like, go watch the E3 2011 Wii U reveal and tell me it that you can tell whether or not it's a new console or an add-on for the Wii. Because I couldn't oh, I watch it. Like, I, I only knew because, like, uh, you know, I watched a video of someone saying, hey, this is Nintendo's new console. I was like, oh, that's neat. 
<laughs> is it, is it worth real. mentioning that one down on this crossword is what's up? <laughs> no, it's not. It's moving on. Well, what was the description for that? What's not down? Catchphrase from Query <laughs> Maker. But it's not what's up, it's what's up. Yeah, that's the country's from Scary Movie. He's saying or I guess there's more what's up. Maybe. Yeah, wasn't it with like a Z was up? I... I don't know. I don't know what the clue was, but... Yeah, anyway, no one no one remembers that Wii U existed, and that's just how Nintendo wants it. So, uh, thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, thank you for spending time with us in the chicken coop. Hope to see you all next week we shout out to we next week? shout out to our sponsors campbell's uh and um soldier boy soldier boy still a free man and purdue Remember, we still do, we still do have a money fundraising mo- event for money to buy a soldier yeah. boy yeah yep so yes please <laughs> just get us halfway there and we'll we'll take care of the rest yes you will dollar for dollar match your donations. Your donations. Getting a soldier Straight to buying Ninja. Soldier Boy. All we need is 30 more dollars. We are just $30 away got, from our goal. We got three cents towards it. Uh, no, we don't. Not until we get 100 bucks. It? So we actually need $100 unless, one of you, unless you guys want to donate through PayPal. Yeah, I refuse to put any money towards that, so... <laughs> We wouldn't buy it from Soldier Boy. We'd buy it from Amazon because it's the same product. And the Amazon one is $40 cheaper. And not sold out? And not sold out. Yeah, that's true. You cannot buy the Soldier Boy. It's sold out. Which is weird since the product is available on Amazon. So how are they out? <laughs> There's a lot of questions. There's, There's a lot, lot of questions. Of um, does Soldier Boy have like a separate stock of them, and Amazon has a separate stock? Maybe he's just buying them off Amazon, selling <laughs> them for forty dollars more. <laughs> that would not be illegal, I guess. <laughs> I mean, he's buying it from himself. I mean, I yeah, I, I guess that isn't illegal. I don't know. Scalpers can do it. Amiibo hunters. <laughs> yeah, it's technically not illegal. Anyway, uh, that's all we got for the show tonight, guys. Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for listening. This, again, was our most requested episode by far. So I hope that satisfies everyone's curiosity. And uh, hopefully our stories made any ounce of sense. I finally understand why people request this. Because our one viewer is your girlfriend, and she wanted you to say the story of how you two met. It's actually not to you, Aaron. That's actually not true. Uh, I'm on to you. We have other viewers. Like who? Lerone? Other viewers. Anyway, have, everyone have yourselves a good night. Merry Christmas.